everyone for joining us today to discuss our newest AGA clinical practice update on the role of intestinal ultrasound in inflammatory bowel disease. My name is Shirley cohen Meckelberg, and I'm a gastroenterologist at the University of Michigan. I'm joined today by the lead author for the CPU, Dr. Mallory Siobhan, who's a pediatric gastroenterologist at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Our other co-authors include Dr. Michael Dolinger from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City and Dr. Bincy Abraham from Houston Methodist in Houston, Texas. Dr. Siobhan, how is intestinal ultrasound revolutionizing the monitoring and management of inflammatory bowel disease? The strike two guidelines highlight that reaching endoscopic remission is the most important target for maintaining long-term steroid-free remission and avoided disease complications. With intestinal ultrasound, we now have a way of assessing disease activity in the clinic in real time as a patient comes for a routine assessment. Features of active disease on ultrasound include increased bowel wall thickness, increased Doppler activity, the presence of inflammatory fat, and the appearance of the bowel wall layers term stratification, which can be assessed at the bedside. Uh, that is quite interesting. So what are specific clinical applications and benefits of intestinal ultrasound for patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis? Intestinal ultrasound can be a simple way to screen for intestinal inflammation at the first clinic visit to expedite investigations in patients with nonspecific symptoms. We can also monitor disease activity in known patients where we can see the thickness of the bowel wall improve while on therapy or worsen with a flare of disease. Studies have shown that changes in bowel wall thickness can be detected as early as two weeks after starting an effective treatment in ulcerative colitis and as early as four weeks in patients with Crohn's disease. Intestinal ultrasound can also detect disease complication in Crohn's disease and even monitor postoperative recurrences. Great. So in context of these clinical applications that you described, what are the challenges and limitations of implementing intestinal ultrasound into clinical practice? Although intestinal ultrasound is a great adjunct to the clinical evaluation of patients with IBD, it does have some limitation that should be considered. For one, in the setting of very mild disease, finding an ultrasound may not always be very striking. Precise measurement of length of disease may also be a tricky and extensive small bowel Crohn's disease. Intestinal ultrasound is not meant to replace dysplasia of surveillance, for which we still advise screening using colonoscopy. Finally, proximal disease uh, and rectal disease are difficult to assess on transabdominal ultrasound. Great. Dr. Siobhan, thank you for that summary, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope this commentary is a useful introduction to intestinal ultrasound as it becomes a more common aspect of clinical IBD practice. Thank you. Thank you.